Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to do the requested video of my 10 favorite um, coloring and art supplies purchased in 2021. <clears throat> so keep in mind this is what I've uh, my top 10 favorite supplies purchased this year. Not all time. <laughs> um, so like obviously you won't see Prismas here because I originally got those years ago. But um, these are my favorite supplies purchased in this year. And I want to emphasize supplies because it is not just colored pencils. Um, there's actually like non-coloring um, mediums or uh, what's the word? <laughs> Basically the accessories <laughs> to my art um, that honestly I'm super happy I got. So without further ado, let's uh, move some stuff out of the way and get to it. I might not be able to move this. <laughs> okay, so number 10 is the Paul Rubens Metallic Watercolors. So I had gotten this from a Prime Day sale, and um, I forget how much I ended up paying for it, but I do have a swatching video on my channel, and these are really pretty metallic watercolors. Um, really heavy on the blues, but I've used them in coloring books, and they're just gorgeous. Their golds are very pretty, and I mean, just... You can water these down to get a very light effect or use them really concentrated and get tons of sparkle. Now, I don't know if the sparkle is going to show. Probably not. Never show. There we go. If I get the right angle. So, yeah, this is number 10. Um, I really like these. I need to use them more. I love the palette. So, not only do I have all these paints here, but I love the tin box. So, these... Oops, if I can get it out. There we go, it got stuck. Okay, so these lift out the tray. And then you have a ton of mixing wells. So you got mixing wells here, mixing wells here. I mean, this is a hearty tray. And these come in like the most adorable pink box and packaging. <laughs> but these are actually really good paints. So that is number 10. My box um, took some damage. I actually actually uh, dropped it so you see a dent right there and it held up just fine so if you're curious about durability <laughs> it's great okay number nine this is the Coran Dash palette so like I said there's some things that are accessories but I'm like in love with them um, so with the Coran Dash palette this is something I bought and I thought I would never use I end up using it all the time. Like I use this several times a week. So it has a rough side and it has a smooth side. Um, and I use it a lot for my watercolor pencils and crayons like Neo Colors, either putting them down here and picking it up and putting it onto paper or mixing colors. I use this a lot more than I thought it, I would when I bought it. So that's what made it kind of funny. I was like, I don't think I'll actually use that that much, but I did. Um, now, they're like, I think it's 10 or 11 bucks. Uh, might be more. Um, you can just get like a cutting board, plastic cutting board with a rough side. But the reason I like this is, well, one, it's got the cute little thumb thingy if you want to have your palette. But I like how it has a rough and a smooth side. So the rough side I use for anything I want to get color off, even gelatos, um, you know, so gel crayons. I use this for that, too. Smooth side, like I take my watercolor brushes, um, brush markers, and mix them on here. You can also mix your regular watercolors, like the Paul Rubens I just showed you, I could mix on here. So the rough side is for like pulling color off of a hard medium that then activates. Like I use my ink tents on here also, um, my Derwent Graphitant, gosh, everything. <laughs> I use this way more than I thought I would. So that was kind of surprising, so I had to include it in my favorites. Um... Okay, number eight is oops, the Pentel water brushes. I just grabbed two. I, I bought a four pack, but um, I have been trying to find water brushes I enjoy in terms of water control because gosh darn it, they're all different. None just release the exact same amount of water. Um, the grip and then the brush. Um, I do have the Kiritaki Zig, which are like, you know, 
the nice creme de la creme that everyone boasts about. I don't really, I mean, they're something I like, but I always, when I'm reaching for a water brush, I reach for the Pentel. So that tells me something. Um, I love the fine tip brush. It works great. I just love how you give it a little squeeze. The water comes out. It's not too much, but the brush stays nice and moist. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy these ones. So this is like my go-to. And then second would be I grab my Kiritake Zig ones, but I really like the Pentels. So that is for that one. Okay, uh, what are we on? Seven? <laughs> Seven is something I just recently purchased. Um, I'll actually be using this in a Carolina or Carolina, however you say it, Kuba Kelska book. So this is Prima Marketing's Watercolor Confections line, and this is the Pastel Dreams. I just posted a video swatching these, but these colors are just so pretty. I love it. Um, I love all the Prima marketing. I'm trying to collect them all, not for collection's sake. Um, I actually like their paints. They're very nice. So, oops, this one's a little wonky, but yeah. So this one would be number seven. I really love the colors. And like I said, I plan to use it in one of my books this week because I was just like blown away when I was swatching them. And they're not all mixed with white. So usually when you get a pastel paint set, um, it's usually a ton of white mixed in. Not every one of these has white. In fact, like, um, you know, Icy Sky, Lilac Rain, Bumblebee, Citrus, these are all single pigment colors. There is no white mixed in. So it it's actually pretty refreshing. Um, I have another pastel set that is just overloaded with white and that makes it very opaque these are actually quite translucent too see my black line here um so that's also something to keep in mind but yeah i was just really impressed with this one and very excited to use it so that is number seven yay <laughs> okay number six um is the afmat sharpener now this is electric you have to plug it in it's not battery uh, but it handles 6 to 12 millimeter barrels. So, I mean, you can throw even your square brute fooners in here. It's it's going to take it just fine. I um, hope I'm not triggering anyone. It's full. I need to empty it. <laughs> but, like, you just pull off the top to empty it. Um, it does have an auto stop feature. But the auto stop doesn't really stop on time. I actually pull my pencil out way before the auto stop. Uh, but yeah, I use this for all my pencils. I started using it for my Prismas and I have not had breakage since. Um, so it is definitely one of my favorite purchases this year uh, by far. Um, and it doesn't chew up the pencil like people would think with an electric pencil sharpener. I actually did a video measuring and showing you how you don't lose lead. Yes, you lose wood, um, but that's with any sharpener. It has to remove wood to sharpen. <laughs> hate to break it to you. <laughs> I had a few comments. Oh, you lose wood. Um, yeah, that's that's how you sharpen. <laughs> so, um, but I did show that you don't lose lead, and that's what's important. You're paying for the lead here, um, and you don't want to lose the lead. So I have a video on that. But I love it, and yes, I will empty this before I plug it back in. Okay. All right, next is my, ooh, it's dusty. <laughs> we have a lot of construction dust, like, just blowing around the house right now, so everything is dusty. Um, this is the 120 Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolors. Now, I did just recently purchase the Coran Dash Supra Color 2 and Museum Aquarelles. They're not included in my top 10 because I haven't played with them enough to decide like how I feel about them. Um, I haven't, I've colored one page with Supra Colors, nothing with the Museum Aquarelles. So I, I haven't given them a fair shake and I don't want to claim they'd be my favorite. Although the Supra Colors I really, really like. It's just I haven't used them enough. Okay, so <laughs> done with disclaimers. Um, the Albrecht Durer, however, I have used a lot. You can actually see. Um, now, watercolor pencils, here's the reason you 
don't need to be scared about investing in them. They last a lot longer than a normal set of pencils. Um, I've used these quite heavily. You can see the different sharpening lines, but they're not going to be used up as much because you put just a little bit down, activate it with water. But I love these pencils. Um, I love the pigments. I love the range of colors. Now it does match up with polychromos. So if you like the range in polychromos, you're going to love the range in here. Um, just gorgeous, gorgeous pencils. Beautiful lay down. Um, they melt perfectly to the water. I love them. I have no complaints at all about these pencils. Um, I definitely want to use them more this upcoming year. But yes, these were one of my favorite purchases of 2021. I don't know why I waited so long to buy them. And I did do a video showing how you could just get the 12 count of these and all the colors you could make. So you don't have to buy the 120. I just, well, did because I have full set syndrome. But uh, I do have a video showing how you can make a ton of colors buying the 12 count set of these as well. Okay. So my next favorite supply purchase this year is the Pan Pastel Pearlescent. So they come in the palette, which is never easy to open. <laughs> um, I use these a ton on backgrounds. Unfortunately, you guys will never see the cool effects because it doesn't show up on camera. But these are, they have a very fine like pearlescent finish, so a glittery finish, and the colors are so pretty on pages. I use them a lot in my Hannah Carlson one that I'm doing in all pastels um, and just other coloring books as well because uh, they're very fun colors and I love the sparkle effect. I just wish you guys could see the sparkle effect, but it's a very fine, fine glitter. You can kind of see it in there. So when I say like, you know, glittery, it's definitely true to its name. It's pearlescent. It has that nice slight sheen and that's it. But they blend together. I love the color range that they picked for these. Perfect color sets. Um, I plan to purchase the metallic ones and add them to this palette, but I love that it came in a palette because this is the best way to store pan pastels by far. I bought uh, two of those big ones for my other pan pastels. And yeah, I love it. You just pop off the lid, use what you need, close it up, call it a day. So love these things, but this was one of my favorites this year. Okay, now the paint puck cup. <laughs> you can't be surprised. I like rave about this all the time. Um, this is my third favorite, a uh, top three, I guess. So I love this cup. It's so simple um, and so amazing. So it has that paint puck down there. You can just buy the paint puck and put it in a jar, but the, the cup itself is actually very useful. So one, it's got a silicone bottom, so it doesn't move on your desk. It's not going to slide anywhere. Then you just use the paint puck down there to clean off your bristles. Like this water can get super dirty and you would never know when your brush comes out of it. Um, it has little grippies here to hold your brush in the water. You can also hang your brushes upside down here to drip dry into this. That's why it's kind of curved. Or you can have them upright if they're already dry and just waiting to be used. <clears throat> um, so yeah, this was worth every penny. And back when I originally bought it, they were over 30 bucks, but now they're under 30. And then um, a subscriber of mine a few months ago sent me a second one, which was awesome because, well, when you're doing watercolors, you can get away with one paint puck cup. Well, try saying that 10 times fast. Um, but when you're doing like acrylics or gouache, you definitely want two, like one for clean, one for dirty. So it was so awesome. He sent me one. And so I have a purple and a green and I can't recommend these cups enough. Um, Anyone who's bought them has like messaged me and been like, this thing is amazing. I'm like, I know it's, it's so simple. It's just a little cup, but holy crap, it's worth every dime. So yeah, definitely a fave. Okay. Second favorite purchase this year, <laughs> Copics. Now I've had Copics, um, like a few, but, uh, at the beginning of this year, but what in October I think it was I bought 
all the Copics that I was missing. So I had been collecting 10 a month for a really long time. And I decided to just bite the bullet and buy all of them. Now, when I say all of them, the only thing I didn't buy was the gray set. And that is because I have a ton of Ohuhu grays right now. But once those are gone, then I will go and purchase the Copics. Um, I love the Copics. I know they're ridiculously priced. I know the refills uh, have gone up and gotten smaller. But you know what? I've used all sorts of markers. I've used Art and Fly, uh, Color It, um, Blick, who is supposed to be the latest and greatest competitor of the Copic. I've used Ohuhu. Uh, no one holds a candle not only to the quality of this marker, but the ink colors and the performance. Um, the color range, 358 colors, perfectly balanced the way they have done their colors um their color coding system no company has yet rivaled this color coding system um ohuhu constantly changes theirs with each new release i know they're trying to compete but it's like come on guys like get it together um but even then if you were to swatch out all your ohuhus um i just bought that 316 set which is a cool set although it's not brush it's bullet and chisel even those colors are they're lacking in some of the more um, lighter tones and some of the earthier tones. I, like, I know these cost a fortune. Trust me, I, I went and bought all the ones I was missing. And gosh darn it, when I went back and looked and saw how much that cost, I <laughs> hurled. Um, but I love these things. Every time I pick them up, um, I am just blown away at the quality and performance of the Copic. So... It has, ooh, let me smack that, um, you know, the brush nib. This brush nib, I have yet to find a company that can compete with this brush nib. Now, there's companies using similar nibs, but they the nib is very different on this Copic. Uh, the Blick one is supposed to be close to it. Uh, so is the Arteza. They're supposed to be foam rubber, but they, they still don't feel like the Copic nib. Um, and then it does have the chisel side, which I sometimes use but and then you know the color coding system basically you can look at this system or color code and not have to even look at your swatch chart now Arteza Everblend's brush series does have a good color coding system I'll give them that and you actually wouldn't need to look at the chart either to know it would blend together um so they're pretty close but they only have like oh gosh I don't even know what the sets add up to 150 maybe and even then, they're sold in like little sets that overlap and duplicate one another. I've done a review on them. <laughs> so until they could just release them or have them open stock, plus they're not refillable, they still don't hold a candle to that. Um, they do have great colors, though. So if they add more colors and fix a few things, then they would be my closest rival to the Copic um, so far. But I love the Copic. I love that you can buy them open stock. Um, they're... You know, it's better to buy the sets if you can, the 72 count sets, because per marker price is way cheaper. Uh, and they don't have duplicates in those sets, so you can do that. Now, I had bought a set, but I also had already bought open stock. So I was stuck filling my collection with just open stock. And I found a site that has these Copic sketches for four bucks a piece. And then they only carry like 180 colors, I think it is. And then I got the rest from Blick. So, um, yeah, I, I love these markers to death. Um, I have yet to find a marker that I'm as excited to use. And then look how pretty they are when they're in a case. Oh, so gorgeous. <laughs> I actually don't like this case. Um doesn't hold them very well. It holds fatter like Ohuhu and square markers while the Copics kind of twist around. But once I get my art room done, I'll probably pull these out. But I wanted a travel case because I don't often color in my art studio. Okay, so what is my favorite purchase of 2021? This may surprise some people, may not. Um, the 120 Brute Fooners. Uh, now again, remember, these are only things I have purchased in 2021. Not all time. 
This is not my all-time favorite pencil. You all know what my all-time favorite pencil is. However, when it comes to supplies I bought this year, this is one that, honestly, I was incredibly impressed. Um, these are a budget oil-based pencil. Uh, here, I just wanted to leave the paper sleeve on so you could see it. This is actually a spare set. So I've actually, I had purchased the original set this year, and I have, oh, come on. I have used these so much that I already, all right, well, let's just tear it off. I already needed a spare set to replace some of my colors. So I hate these paper sleeves that these companies use. <laughs> I left it on though so you could see the cool art deco thing going on. Oh, did that hurt anyone's ears? It hurt mine. Okay. So yeah, I bought an, another set. Um, they have lightning deals on these things, by the way, all the time. So please never, ever pay re like the normal price. Awesome color ranges. Um, beautiful pencils. So they're square. They don't have names, but they don't need them. I'm really, I really don't care about the names. Um, you can get the translated name. People have translated them. I just let, I go by the number, but yeah, these are the Brute Fooner Square Pencils. Um, gorgeous, excellent performance. Um, the tin is crap. <laughs> You'll definitely want to put these in a case. I mean, these trays are like flimsy, but this is my favorite purchase of this year. I love these oil-based pencils a bunch. Um, the color range for 120 pencils is perfect. Um, I, I had no complaints, and I even bought the 520 Brute Fooners, which, by the way, are not the same as these at all. Um, totally different formula, different colors. Granted, you can find colors that match, but not the same pencil. This is a totally different formula. Um, and even in that review, I said, just go buy these. <laughs> Save yourself the money. Um, but yeah, there was a lightning deal not too long ago where these were like 17 bucks for 120 these are a budget oil-based pencil, but they are creamy. They're the softest oil-based pencil I have seen, and they actually perform like an oil-based pencil. Um, so that's what's amazing about them is how soft they are, and yet they perform and layer like an oil. So if you really like polychromos, but you don't like the hardness of them, then the 120 Brute Fooners, one, will save you a ton of money, <laughs> and two, you know, have that softer lead now when it comes to light fast and all that this doesn't apply so if you are looking for light fast pencil then go back over to your polys um, or your Derwent light fast because these are not going to have that but for adult coloring um, amazing pencils I absolutely love these things I've done everything from hair to skin to florals um, and yeah I, I adore these things so this is my favorite purchase of this year I'm so happy I tried them, and like I said, I've gone through enough of these to have to buy a set. Now, they're not open stock. Uh, you can buy smaller sets, so if there's a certain pencil you're low on, you can get the smaller set, but it just made sense for me to buy another 120, so that is the bummer. You'll have to buy a whole new set to replace one or two pencils, but if you use them as much as I have used them, then you'll actually wear down all your pencils, and it'll be good. So... That is my top 10 favorite art and coloring supplies purchased. Oh, these cases are such crap <laughs> of 2021. Um, if you have any questions about any of these supplies that I showed today, just leave that in the comments below. Let me know what your favorites were for this year. Um, like I said, again, it's only this year. Obviously, Prismacolor, if you said, give me your top 10 pencils, Prismacolor would always be number one, <laughs> so, um, which I do have a request to do my top favorite pencils um, by budget, wax, and oil categories, so that's going to be an interesting one. Um, but yeah, I will be doing a video on that somewhere down the road. I don't want to do a ton of like top 10 collection type videos all the time. <laughs> so um, let me know if any of these are something you got this year and they're also your favorite. That would be fun to know. And until next time, guys, take care. Bye now.